Hello, and welcome to the Knitting Samurai Plus One video podcast. I am your host, Steph. This is episode 49. Happy spring! <laughs> Today is Saturday, March 30th, and I'm hoping to get a quick episode recorded while Roland takes his nap, so we'll see how I do. Um, this past week was absolutely crazy. Yeah, they're um, very long, long days for me. Four days of, um, you know, it was the big, how do I say this? <laughs> all the storm managers from all over the country fly in for the week. And those of us that work at the corporate office spend the week putting on presentations and uh, stage managing fashion shows and all kinds of craziness and the store managers are insanely hyper and it's just like you're on your feet and you're going for it. It's one night we had the banquet and it was 11 o'clock before I left, you know, and the day starts at 7.30 in the morning. So it's very long days and I'm still tired and run down and many of the nights I came home and I just played Candy Crush. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know I didn't even take out my knitting. No knitting at lunch, no nothing. So I'm... I'm Preemptive, I'll apologize because this episode is mainly going to be, well, here's a little tiny bit of progress on what you saw last week. Nothing new, nothing percolating around. My brain is just fried. So last night, um, one of my girlfriends came over and we had a nice evening just chilled, drinking pina coladas, and we watched Rock of Ages, and that was good. That was the first step on my road to getting my energy back. And then this morning, Roland and I went shopping, 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 shopping had a bunch of stores actually. He did really, really well. Old Navy has shopping carts now. I know. I didn't know this, so he was contained. Except for the football he kept throwing. <laughs> but, uh, yes, yeah, so we did shopping, and then he took a nap, and I took a nap, and now I'm up, and he's still asleep, and so I'm gonna talk to you. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, first on the needles, or I guess first I will share this with you. So last week I ordered a new bag. Um, Please have a tag inside. Oh dear. I'm gonna say, because I ordered two new bags and one arrived and one didn't. And I'm 99% sure this bag is from Zigzag Stitches. I have two hanks of yarn in it right now and there's room for two more and some needles. So it has the knitting sheep on it. And then inside, inside fabric's really cute too. I'd take a bag in that as well. It says uh, knit pearl and it's white with black with the red balls of yarn. I don't know how much of that you can see, but it's a really nice bag. So this is gonna be my new sweater bag. On the go sweater bag. Because sweaters should be travel portable, and this really isn't. Oh, are you wondering what's in here? Hmm. I learned what they all are. Would you like to know? <laughs> this one is, well first, let me preface. I bought a package of trucky things, whatever construction vehicles for Roland because we were at Target and I was looking at the Sesame Street toys and I was about to buy some for me because I like them and I want to kind of like them all. Um, he could care less and so then I was like, oh, he screams every time we go by a construction site, which there happen to be a lot of them in the springtime. And so we went down the aisle with the trucks and I got him a package of five of these all these, they're cats. I think it was like five bucks at Target. Really good deal, right? Well, he doesn't care. <coughs> Excuse me. And so, uh, yeah, and all being so run down. Yeah, it's just, I know I'm getting a cold. But anyway, so last weekend we brought these home. And I did this little snippet while he opened them. So, here you go. Wait, you have to make their noises. What noise does a truck make? Ooh. Good job. Mm. And this one is... I don't know. This one has like stabilizers, huh? You know what happens? This one plows something. I think. No? No. But they 
Oh, the dump truck is really... Oh, it is as cool as it looks. So we can scoop up the dirt and put it in the dump truck. Dropped on the floor, please. Can you find it? Yay. Thank you very much, Rolly. That's a good job. Thank you. Thank you. Paver, I think. That's what we're going to call it. Vroom, 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 Oh, thank you. That's the one I am. I think these guys should all park. But afterwards, Steve was very adamant that I needed to learn them. So this one is a steam paper? Steam? It's been a week. I failed that test. I don't know. Steam roller. We'll call it that. And this one is the bulldozer. And this one is the X. Actually, Steve told me this was a backhoe. Backhoe. And my dad told me, oh, no, 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 that's an excavator because it's big. So this is an excavator. This is the dump truck. I knew that one. And this is the front end loader. So now Roland and I are fully versed when we drive around and see these things. But <laughs> um, in this bag, I have my grease, which is by Jane Richmond. I, haven't, I don't even have show notes. Oh, my goodness. Okay, Jane Richmond. And I am using New Tweed. But he's coughing. New tweed by Tacky Yarns in color 33. This is a merino silk cotton viscose yarn. And if you would like to look at it mid row and see where I am, that's how it looks so far. I hope you guys can't hear the coughing. So I had to, I frogged back, right? Because it was too huge. And I have. See, I had about three hours of car riding last weekend, last Sunday, and so I want to say I knit another two inches on this. So I haven't tried it on, but it's still working on it. It's still going. It was good being trapped in the car with this as my only knitting project forced me to knit on it because I was so disgusted with it after frogging so much back. I don't think I would have knit on it, so it was good to be forced to. So this is going to go on this back, so it's more portable than it currently is. Um, Next on the needles, I have the Pebbled Beanie by Elizabeth Parker, I think, if I've typed that out enough times. I've done a couple more rows. As I said, this is just going to be something I work on a little bit here, a little bit there. This is uh, Schaefer Nicole in the Empress Zhao colorway. I am using U.S. size 2 or 2.5 for this, and um, it's a slow, slow project, but I like how it's turning out. So... I'm going to keep working on that, trucking away a couple rows a week, a couple rows a day. I should have it finished by next November. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. I'm working on it here. Um, also, on the needles oops, that I have for your viewing pleasure, you know how I talked about Chadwick, the caterpillar, that... Uh, so this is a Rebecca Danger pattern. Chadwick the Shakespearean caterpillar, I believe is the name of the pattern. He has six body segments and a head and arms. And so th at this point I have three, four, five. I'm working on the sixth segment. I am using Knit Picks Felicity Sport in the Dockside colorway. Um, alternating two skeins, or I'm using two skeins because one skein would have gotten me about halfway through each of these sections. Looks like the blue section is a little bigger than the others. I'm just going, I'm switching color when, I, I'm ending the segment when the color ends. So, there's a little bit of flexibility here in this pattern, in the way I'm going along. I also went to Target and got, when we bought the, the tracks, uh, cat toys. A couple of soft, squishy balls with rattles in them. And then I came home, I uh, did a little surgery on one of the cat toys, cut the side, took out a bunch of the stuff in to make it the right size, and I put it in to this segment. So it's, it's like a rattle. I also got some pipe cleaners. This um, is not something she recommends, but I recommend it. 
So I got some pipe cleaners and took two of them and twisted them together and shoved them down inside amongst the stuffing. So I'm thinking that'll make him a little more. It hasn't so far, but maybe it'll make him more poseable. We'll see. I'm also thinking about putting some pipe cleaner into the arms so he could use those to stabilize because uh, I don't want him to just be a tube since I do have uh, three preggers at work. And <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry. I had initially thought I would knit one, maybe two, maybe three of these and um, give them each one as like, you know, the trademark Stephanie baby shower gift for the three of them. But I'm not so much loving the pattern. I had been on, on a tear with it and doing a section a day so that, you know, I was going along fine and then the whole work explosion. So uh, I'll get back to it. I will definitely finish this one, which I am knitting on U.S. twos, smaller size twos, not the big size twos, I think. It'll be on show notes, which you can find at knittingsamuraiplus1.blogspot.com. Um, yeah, so I'm using the smaller size needles, and I might might make another one if I could use worsted weight yarn. It might be more fun than this size, and it might be more fun if I were not alternating to yarns, so I'm constantly carrying that. I have a real, real hard time with that in my head. So, that's my, ch I don't know why I do. That's my Chadwick. I showed you last time Dinosaur's Banquet. I have my yarn picked out have some of my yarn picked out for the dinosaur, but I haven't started it yet. So, more to come on that later because there will be a dinosaur. Although right now, his current favorite book is, I don't have it down here, is Go Dogs Go, which I think is from 1961. Yeah. Uh, when I was growing up, my parents read Are You My Mother by P.D. Eastman, I think is her name. I'll link it in the show notes, I think, or his name. I'll link it in the show notes. So it's about a bird that's trying to find its mother, and it meets a cat and a hen and a chicken. Cat, hen, dog, steam shovel, and a cow. And so I do all the voices, and he, he's always liked that book, and I always liked it just because of my fond memories of it. And I think that same author, my aunt got the book for Roland, and it came in a pack. <laughs> came in a pack with several other books, and one of the other books is Go Dogs Go. And the recurring line on each page, at least the way we read it, is go by bike, go by foot, go by skis, go by. And to him, I think that sounds like bye bye. So he carries around the book going bye bye, bye bye, and he hands it to you. I can read that book to him four times, and he's still like, read it some more, read it. So Go Dogs Go is currently number one on the rolling list. Hopefully, Dinosaur's Banquet will, will climb the charts again. And then, really, the only thing that did get a fair amount of knitting this week are the socks for my grandmother. So, last time, I think I just had the start. The sock blockers are in the closet. I'm not taking them on. I just had the start going. Um, this time, I can show you. What can I show you? I can show you two socks. There we go. With a wonky ball inside. So... This one is about three inches past the heel turn. There are my heels, they're not perfect twins, but the front of the socks are. So I cut, I pulled off a, a section of the color repeat, so from the orange to the yellow, and worked it in as I needed to for my gusset increases. Like I lined it up so that I was using a little more of the light blue, a little more of the dark blue as I needed to to keep the three to four stripes of each color and then I used that skein of yarn to work the um, heel flap and then when I got back to the front I picked back up my original working yarn and so I kept the same stripe going so it didn't fall off so the dark blue is always followed by the light blue dark blue light blue so that worked out really well for me. I like to maintain my stripes, but I'm not a huge fan of the afterthought heel. So, that's it. That's where I'm at. I've got this much left of this skein. I've got, yeah, great. Wonderful grammar, Stephanie. I have this much left of this skein. I think you can see another blue section. So, um, probably if I wanted to, I could do another four inches. I don't think I want to make them that tall, but I would like to use up as much of the yarn as possible. So 
We'll see. I should try them on, see how they fit on me. Her feet are definitely smaller than mine, but, um, you know, I'm working on the legs, so I don't want it to be too tall for her. And there's the other one. That's, last night, that was the first night that I knit, and I did the whole heel, the turn and the flap last night while we were hanging out. So, um, I think that's about it. Yeah. And I have a sip of coffee. I'm going to remind you that the um, Spring Swap signups are going on right now. So the Knitting Samurai Plus One group, um, we are having a yarn swap. The names will go out on the 6th. I think the swap runs until the 5th, April 5th. So if you'd like to participate, get on over there on the boards. Um, there's a thread you can sign up there and then shoot me an email with your address, Rob name, and real name. There you go. <laughs> and in about a week, I will be sending out the swap, your swap partner to you. So um, we're talking about 25, around $25 for a scanning yarn and some goodies in it. And you've got about a month to get the package together and get it out. So if that sounds fun to you, go on over and sign up. I'm really looking forward to it. I think we've got a good group of of people so far, quite a few international people. So if um, you're interested but you weren't sure if international was going to be accepted, please come join. Please, 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 especially you Canadians. We've got a few of you, but more of you I'd like it so I can mix you up a little better. So if you'd like to participate, please come over. Um, trying to think if there's anything else going on. I'd like to say thank you to Rebecca J. She sent me a wonderful um, thank you gift for the dark and stormy cow so thank you very much Rebecca I will put it to good use and let you know when I do <laughs> so that I think is about all I have for you guys this week I hope you have a great week I'm looking at the camera and I'm wondering if it's tilted if it is I'm so sorry this episode was kind of cockeyed <laughs> I should record like this yeah but this week promises to be a little less Less hectic, more. I have a lot of data entry desk work to do this week, so that's usually when I get going. Oh, I wanted to tell you, I don't think I talked about it last time, and I don't think I know enough to really tell you this time. This is our new phone, my new phone. Um, isn't it pretty? The Verizon lady was like, okay, you can get an iPhone, but if you have a child who's under two who's going to steal your phone out of your hands at every chance he gets, you have to go buy an otter box, O-T-T-E-R box. It has two cases that cover the phone, so it makes a huge phone. It doesn't actually fit in my wallet compartment where my phone used to live, but um, it's huge and it's safe. And we've already dropped it a couple times in the stores. I dropped it out of the car and there's nothing, no sign of wear or tear. So, but what I wanted to tell you is that I have been listening to The Forgotten Garden by Kate Morton. Um, on Audible. I love Audible. I am not shilling for Audible. I'm just telling you it's a good book. So Kate Morton, Forgotten Garden. It is like, um, it's a bestseller. I don't know how long ago it was a bestseller. One of my coworkers is reading it. And so I was like, oh, I'll listen to it. Um, mystery upon mystery upon mystery. So I just want to tell you that if you are looking for a quick, light, fluffy, intense, does that all counterdict? <laughs> book, um, check that out. The Forgotten Garden by Kate Morton. I'll link it in the show notes. Very, very good. And I also wanted to tell you that if you love Downton Abbey, um, oh, and this set takes place in 1870 in London, so it's, it's a little bit similar time to Downton. But if you like Downton Abbey and Netflix has been yelling at you the way it yelled at me to watch the Foresight Saga, I highly recommend it. It's a bit more soap opera-y than Downton. Mm -hmm. But um, it's really good, so check that out too. And what else have we been watching? That the new season of Mad Men is out on Netflix. I noticed that um, Steve has an Xbox 360 and we have an Apple TV that we run our Netflix through. I love that by the way. You could throw everything up on that Apple TV. Oh, I want one for my car. But anyways, um, so we have the 360 and we never use it even though we could run Netflix through it, we use the Apple TV instead. Well, we happened to turn it on the other day, and lo and behold, Redbox has an app that you can, like, buy into. So I think it's 8 bucks a month for four credits, and you get to watch new releases. 
and you don't have to mail them back. So I'm going to be trying that out soon. I'll let you know what I think. Yeah, yeah. But we're finishing up season two of Game of Thrones because season three is starting. <laughs> I know. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Game of Thrones, George R. R. Martin. You have to like the whole fantasy medieval night genre. But if you do, it's a very good group of books and TV show on HBO. Okay, there. That's my rambly bit. I hope I filled it up enough so that it was interesting for you. And I hope you have a great 10 days or so until we talk again. And yay!